what up y'all welcome back to my channel I hope you guys are having a wonderful morning well it's morning when I'm recording this um so I decided to go ahead and um, review Ayana fix my life and someone asked me to record this um, review so um, let's just get right into it you know the drill do not forget to subscribe do not forget to click the little bell to be notified I want to upload new videos and do not forget to follow me on Instagram Ayala is a heavy show. It's a heavy show. Some episodes aren't as heavy as others, but this episode was it it was sad. It was it was really sad. It was really sad to me. So okay, so Nikita is a 32-year-old woman who lives in Atlanta who has six children. Um about I think four of her children live with her mother in Milwaukee. Um Ayala sits down with her to kind of get an understanding of what's going on. Why is she there? Why did she write into the show? And Nikita wants a better relationship with her mother. Um, her mother has full custody of the four kids. And um, Nikita just continues having babies. So she just had a baby four weeks before she sat down with Ayala. So... Ayala is really trying to get an understanding of the situation and why she doesn't have these kids. And Nikita basically explained that, you know, she got pregnant. Um, she moved in with her mom for help and, and trying to get back on her feet. Um, she couldn't get along with her mother, so she moved out. She, was, she moved to Atlanta and she started stripping and she started whatever else she was doing. And she then said that her best friend died. And after her best friend died, she quit her job. She just was in a depressive state. She couldn't function. She couldn't do anything. And she sent her kids to live with her mother. She said that they went to court. And her mom got full guardianship of the kids. But she thought that once she got back on her feet, once she showed that she was stable enough, to take her kids back then she will get them back but her mom has been pushing back on that and she hasn't gotten her kids but in the meantime she has gotten two other children she just keeps making children so Ayala brought up the newest child and the father of this child Nikita said that he was a good man he takes care of her and her kid and he just, you know, he wanted to have a baby with her. So that is why she had a sixth child. Um, you know, she went ahead basically praising this guy, saying that he does so much for her. Ayala inquired, like, okay, if he does so much for you, did he put you in a house? Does he pay your bills? Does he have a ring on your finger? Like, what does he do that is so fascinating that you are praising this man so much? And... Ayala asked, does he live with her? And Nikita said, no, he doesn't. Then Ayala asked, is he married? And Nikita, it seems like Nikita did not want to answer that question. She started looking away. She started, it's like she's ashamed of it. But she finally came out and said he's a married man. She said that she saw him walking in front of her car one day. And she just had to have him. This girl is so dysfunctional, so dysfunctional. And when she was telling this story, I felt like something must have happened to her in her childhood to even get her to this point. So Ayala, as she always does, she brings up childhood. And Nikita said that, you know, she started birth control at the age of 12. That's not common in my opinion. I've never heard any child start birth control at the age of 12 so Ayana like you know asked about why were you on birth control and she said because she was having sex Ayala asked her did you even learn how to be a woman she said her mother never taught her but someone in the neighborhood did and apparently this young man in the neighborhood came up to her and told her that he will teach her how to be a woman and she never knew that involved sex she went to a house with this boy, and when she got to the house, there were five other people there. And they, all day, they, in that house, 
they basically ran a train on her. Five men. And when I say men, they range from the age 14 to, I think she said 20, 21. She was 12 years old. So she said she was in that house all day. They ran a train on her all day. When she left, she couldn't walk. She couldn't basically function. She was in not only physical trauma, but mental trauma. Um, she never told her mother. That was the thing. She never told her mother about what happened. Apparently, she started acting out. Um, and, you know, that's kind of where it started. So, Ayala decided to sit with the mom to get her take on everything. And from the moment she sat with the mom, to me, the mom was defensive. The mom didn't want to own up the responsibility of all of this because based on the way Nikita was brought up this is why she's doing the things that she's doing because you are taking her kids she will continue having more children because you are taking care of her responsibility she doesn't know how to be a mother and um, Ayala basically asked her like why are you why are you taking the kids and she said that she doesn't want them to end up without she doesn't want them to end up in the wrong path basically in my opinion she is making up for not being that mother to Nikita and she said that Nikita isn't trying she's not doing what she's supposed to do and Ayala asked her about her upbringing she said that she got Nikita at the age of 14 she was she was basically molested she was raped she got Nikita at the age of 14. She had to drop out of school because she had to raise her daughter. Her mother never helped her. She had to learn how to raise this child at 14 by herself. She had no clue what she was doing. So she raised her the way she knew how to raise because she, she didn't know anything. At 14, you're just developing. You don't know anything. So... She basically had to raise her that way. And she said that, you know, she tried her best with Nikita, but Nikita just started acting out at the age of 11. And Ayala knew why she was acting out, because Nikita would go to detention homes and stuff like that. So Ayala said, well, you know, maybe it's because of what happened to her. And the mom proceeded to explain that, you know, it was rumored that Nikita was having sex. So some man, I don't know who this man is. I don't know if it's some man that she was with. I don't really know. But some man came to the house to basically give her a whooping. And she was downstairs. The mom was downstairs. And Nikita and the guy was upstairs. And the guy proceeded to tell her to get undressed. And he looked into her vagina to see if she was having sex. So basically, he violated her and then beat her. So the mom said, you know, she contacted the police and everything like that. But Ayala was shocked, really. And so were, so were we because the mom didn't know about the five guys. She didn't know anything about that. So um, Ayala sat down with Nikita and her mom together. And Nik she told Nikita, you need to tell your mother what happened. Her mom, she told her mom about the five boys and, you know, her mom was visibly, like, shaken up about it. Because hearing something like that, hearing that your child was not only violated once, but violated multiple times and you had no clue, that can really hurt and damage a parent because you didn't do what you should have done to protect your child. And... Her mom proceeded to say that, you know, her upbringing, her father never claimed her. Her father was a married man who had, nobody knows that that is her father. He's a mar he was a married man. Her mom was having sex with him, got pregnant, and he never claimed her. Talking about the pathology, it, it, it's a generational thing. If you see it in one generation... It trickles over to the next and continues as a cycle until it stopped. So Ayala decided to give them a few exercises to kind of 
better their relationship and kind of help them understand each other. And um, they were playing musical chairs. And she had some um, papers placed on each chair. And when they stopped, it basically expressed how they're feeling. So Ayala, they stopped and Ayala brought up the married man. And she was like, you are not with this man. You're not in a relationship with this man. Why, why are you praising him for doing something that you are causing to yourself? And Nikita got defensive. Nikita got upset. And she was like, don't talk about him. He's doing what he needs to do. And he's, he's helping us and everything like that. And he's my man. And Ayala told her, look, you can get upset all you want. All right, but he does not belong to you. He is not your man. He cannot provide for you the way he needs to provide for you because he is obligated to somebody else. Ayala told her, I'm not the enemy. I'm here to help you, to give you the tools and everything like that. So they promised to work on their relationship. And um, Nikita said that she won't move to Milwaukee, which I felt was kind of fucked up because your kids are there. To me, it seems like she doesn't really have a relationship with these children. She doesn't want to move to Milwaukee because of all the bad things that happened in Milwaukee. And Ayala basically told her, Milwaukee is not the problem. The problem is within you. Until you heal these issues that you're having, you won't be settled no matter where you are. So, um, the mom said that she even thought about moving her and the kids to Atlanta to be near Nikita so she can basically start her life. The mom has never graduated high school. So she doesn't even ha she doesn't even have a high school diploma nor a GED. So she wants to go back to school, but because of her raising these kids, she can't do anything for herself. So I noticed when she said about moving to Atlanta, Nikita kind of to me, Nikita kind of like didn't like her face showed that she wasn't really for the idea. Nikita wants to have babies and then put them on her mom. That's basically what Nikita wants to do. You know, at the end, they give like an update. And Nikita is... All I remember is saying is Nikita is still with the married man. And I think that Nikita is going to get pregnant again. I just, I just don't think that Nikita really unpacked anything. I don't think she really learned anything. And the fact that... I would think that she would want a better relationship with her mom and her children, not just her mother, because her children are either going to start doing the same shit and they are going to resent her because basically she did not raise them. And that is a common thing in the black community where you have parents that don't want to parent or don't know how to parent and they pass the buck along to their parents. So you had, well, I don't know if it's common like this right now, but like back in the 80s, 90s, 70s, you had a lot of grandparents raising their kids' kids. So it, 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 was a, it is a very common thing in our community. And I just don't think Nikita learned anything. I really don't think that she is going to do better. She's still with the married man. She's not going to leave him. And she's going to have another baby. So um, I would really definitely love to get an update update on this. But I, I just don't think that she learned anything. And Ayala, I know people get on Ayala a lot that she doesn't fix anything. But Ayala is not a fixer. She gives you the tools and it's your job to incorporate these tools in your life. If you don't, then you can't, you'll be in the same cycle over and over again, basically. So, um, the episode was a good episode. I, I would really like an update on this situation because I just don't see her changing. I really don't. I wish she would, but I just don't see it. So I probably will review the next episode. It's, these are some heavy ass episodes. I'm going to review the next episode, so come back for that. Um, and yeah, that's it. So don't forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like this video. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.